Yeah, so hello everyone. Um, it's great to be here. And uh, you know, today I'm going to tell you about Apache TVM. So, so to give you a sense on what Apache TVM is, it is uh, you know end-to-end -end, uh, machine learning framework for deploying deep learning models onto various of hardware platforms. And you know, to see like where we are at, if you look at the current deep learning landscape, there are different frameworks and, and engines. There are compiler, and then finally, there are also like a kernel libraries out there. So the the main question that uh, that uh, a lot of you know that that a lot of people have is you know right now a lot of the approaches that people take are using hand optimized libraries, and TVM really sits in this uh, spectrum of you know being able to try to generate automatic uh, kernel libraries. That, that help us to deploy machine learning model to various kind of hardware platforms. So, so to give us an so you know how TVM is different from the current machine learning systems, most of the current learning system tries to build machine learning solutions to you know, enable machine learning. On the other hand, uh, there's also this question of, you know, uh, we, we need to spend a lot of effort building those systems. So can we actually use machine learning to, to optimize the system themselves? Uh, so that you know, I can spend less effort, or you know, the the TVM community can spend less effort to go and optimize this system. The answer is yes, and the yes, we will we will build what we call learning based learning system that not only use machines that not only build system that enables machine learning, but also use machine learning to optimize those system in return. So in particular, I'm going to tell you a bit about TVM and the task that. Uh, we are looking at when building TVMs, we want to be able, be able to deploy machine learning models onto various kind of power backups, including your data center CPU, GPU, Raspberry Pis, all those specialized accelerators. The main gap of, of this, uh, this deployment is actually huge. So to give a sense of how does existing deep learning frameworks solve this problem, most of the existing frameworks represent the high level computation of those frameworks in what we call high level data flow graphs. And each of the color nodes correspond to a primitive tensor operator, such as like conversion 3D or conversion 2D. And in each of the color operators, actually, there have to be someone to go and implement those libraries. For example, in the, in the case of NVIDIA, there's a library called CUDN that go and implement those operations. The limitation of this approach is, of course, you know, it will cost human resources. And in a lot of cases, you will also want to be able to combine a few uh, nodes together into a new what we call fuse operation, which gives you potential speed up actually on the on the on the execution. However, the question now is we have to implement a blue node in the new library, and it's happened exactly to us a few years ago. And well, what we did then is we call Nvidia, and then you know after a year they add that back. As you can see, it's very time consuming and uh, human engineering resources consumed. And if you multiply that by the amount of hardware devices you want to support is a very engineering intensive process. So that's why we want to try to build a more automated solution. The idea is we want to be able to replace the human-based effort by a bit more automation to build a machine learning program optimizer that automatically generates the high-level data flow graphs and optimize those programs and directly generate code that, that can be deployed onto you know, a new hardware and new workloads. So specifically for this, uh, in order to do that, we will try to you know, describe the high-level grain node in what we call uh, tensor expression language. And, uh, uh, and then we will, we will try to you know, build a space of possible program optimizations based on specification. And we can generate low-level variants from that. For example, to give a sense, you can directly write a for loop that runs this matrix application. If you have written like CPU-based optimization before, you might know that you want to be able to tile the, the loop a bit so that it enjoys better cache locality. Or if you want to map to specialized accelerators that you like, you might want to map some of the instructions to the accelerator instruction that, that uh, these program provide. So in a nutshell, we want to be able to you know, combine billions of possible optimization choices and search over that space in order for us to get a better program. So to formalize this, we can you know, use SSE to denote the search space. And our goal is to be able to generate an optimized configuration for the optimizer 
that gives you a, a program. Now, and now our objective is you want to minimize that execution time. So there are a few ways we can do that. For example, one of the ways to do that is you can what we try called black box auto tuning. You just try out different configurations, send it to the, send it to the target hardware, and try it again and again until you know you find a good solution. The problem of this approach is of course it's very time consuming. You need to run a lot of experiment before you hey it works or it does not work. Another approach we can do is you know we can learn from typical database community by defining what we call a cost model that estimates the cost of a program and use that to drive the search. The problem of this approach is that usually it's very hard to design a very accurate and reliable cost model for each of how kind of how we're interested in. So instead we take a what we call prop uh, you know machine learning based approach. The idea is that we want to be able to you know use the high level configuration to generate a low level AST and extract statistical features from a program and then use a machine learning based predictor to predict the cost of the running program. The advantage of this approach is of, uh, of course we can also use like a neural network based approach that you know based use a GRU model to encode the input program. Um, the advantage of this approach is actually, you know, tree-based model gives you a pretty good predictive accuracy. It, it is also kind of task invariant in a sense that you, know, you, can, you can transfer the model across multiple uh, program domains because the AST is shared. So by using this machine learning-based cost model approach, we can actually get pretty decent performance. For example, here's a benchmark on a single layer of uh, running Confluent 2D operator or a TitanX GPU. If you directly use a black box approach, it can give you pretty decent performance. But if you use the machine learning based optimization, you can find that it will give you better performance than the COD baseline in this particular case. The reason is not because you know uh, machines are better than human. It's simply because you know machines can specialize in a particular case to get to find a specific code that optimizes for this particular operator. Another important perspective of this is that. Not only we can build a cost model for a single search purposes, we can reuse the cost model to to predict the cost of a new task. So as the as as, as the you know the, the compiler start to collect more data, it becomes smarter and it will it will learn the learns to predict the cost more accurately and find better programs faster. So give you a sense of you know what kind of this transfer learning approach can bring you. This is the original curve. And if you use transfer learning for this particular case, that can actually gives you a pretty good performance boost. Uh, on average, it's not as good as this one, but on average, you can get a three extra tax speed up over the non-transfer case. So in a nutshell, we by using a learning-based approach, actually we can you know, scale the automatic program optimization to uh, to a pretty large scale and uh, speed up the speed up further speed up program optimization using transfer learning. So so far, I've talked about this kind of machine learning component of, of this. TVM is actually an end-to-end -end deep learning compiler that, that contains a larger system component with all machine learning as its core. So uh, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about you know, how do we define a search space in here. For example, uh, you know, for a test expression, to recall, we want to define a search space that maps from high-level expression to the low-level valid power programs. And in here, one of the most important things is how can we define the search space? For CPU-based programs, actually, we can reuse a lot of existing primitives by uh, existing frameworks like Halide or Loopy to be able to do root transformations, to make use of cache locality, and do better vectorization. Things become more interesting as we start to look at other kind of hardware, like you know GPUs or emerging new accelerators. For GPUs, one of the important things we want to be able to make use of a shared memory and do thread cooperation effectively across the GPU thread to cooperate with fetch data onto the GPU shared memory. So it's becoming mostly interesting when you start to think about TPU-like accelerators. These accelerators are both special in terms of their compute primitives and the memory subsistently exposed. So let's talk about compute primitives. So traditionally, when you write programs, you can just write scalar program. You just write four loops to compute each element of a target. It's very flexible. And as you start to use the vector instructions like AVX512 or ARM's NEO instruction, we would need to be able to you know, write uh, programs that make use of the vector instruction that imposes some kind of constraints on your program. If you look at the new accelerators, people, uh, or like you know, the instruction like a tensor core instruction in a VDS GPU, things becoming even more complicated. 
uh, we can write a single instruction that performs matrix vector product or matrix matrix product. These these instructions are usually high dimensional, and it's really hard to enumerate all the possible tensor instructions out there. So our challenge is how can we build a generic system for all the potential emerging tensor instructions? In order to do that, what we do is, you know, besides using a declarative language for computer specification, we also use the same language to specify the hardware interface specification. In this case, we describe the matrix vector product of an eight by eight matrix vector instruction. And what we do is we will employ what we call tensorization process that will try to mix and match the computer specification to the hardware interface specification in order to lower the code to make use of the hardware instructions out there. And I, I don't have time to talk about the, the hardware uh, memory scope, but you know, in another to combine this list from prior works, as well as you know, bringing new primitives from GPUs and other accelerators to enable new new acceleration. So so far I've talked about you know how does the TVM works in both the machine learning optimizer component as well as the uh, as well as the code search space component. Let's talk about what we can do by bringing everything together. So here's the benchmark uh, from uh, end to end inference on Nvidia Tata X GPU. This benchmark is a bit old. If you go to the TVM blog post, there are a lot of interesting new latest results as well. So um, both TensorFlow and Apache MXNet are backed by CUDN library. And uh, if you run TVM, you can find that you can get better performance. And there are a few highlights in here. For example, if you look at the left side, it's a, it's a model on ResNet 18, and we can get pretty competitive performance on those kind of standard models. What's most exciting takeaway, though, is that if we look at that far right, um, this is a model called DBQ Learning Model, and we get a 3x better performance. Than the state, than the standard deep learning framework. What is the reason from here? The reason is the reason is that you know we will be able to uh, use the we we want to be able to you know we want to be able to uh, in in this case because the library vendors are heavily optimized for standard benchmark like ResNet 18 because they are paid to do so. On the other hand. On those emerging workloads like a deep learning model, or you know, if you are thinking about any model that runs on your local, uh, on, on your local company, a lot of cases people are developing customized models, and those libraries are not well optimized for those customized models. So, so what we can, what's happening here is that TVM based solution can give us automatic optimization on those emerging models as well, so that you can see this three X performance boost on a lot of cases. We have seen a lot of successful stories of the community deployment case of Apache TBM. Similarly, you know, another interesting thing is we can use the same solution and get portable performance across hardware platforms. In this case, um, you know, we can we can run TBM on both ARM CPU and ARM GPU and get better performance than the native solutions on those platforms. And finally, we can we can also build Solutions that optimizes for latest hardware. This is an example on Nvidia Tensor Core. Again, we can find that in this case, this is a speed up over the existing solution. So we can find that we can get 1.5 x better on transformer related workloads on this case. And again, this is the takeaway on how can we build automatic optimization that gives you, you know, better performance on emerging workloads. So. So far, we have talked about you know what is TVM and how much benefit it can bring you. Let me switch gear to talk a bit about you know where the TVM community is going in the in the last year actually. So there there are a few important directions we are looking into. Um, the first direction is you know we are we are we are building a unified runtime for deploying heterogeneous devices. Um, in in this case, you know uh, one of the important things. In a lot of deployment cases, we, we are starting to see a need to be able to deploy on multiple devices, including things like you know, uh, CUDAs, uh, MPU, or some external runtimes like TensorRT. What we build so far is we will introduce a unified interface for all these, uh, all these uh, device-specific runtimes as what we call a device module, and we can plug them back into the TVM runtime and, and ex exposing them into a single binary file. So by having this unified runtime, we will be able to generate programs that that runs on multiple 
uh, devices, including CPU, GPU, and NT NPU, uh, very effectively using a single interface. And it also gives you some free benefit, like you know, TVM have a have language binding on so all those major languages, including Python, Java, Go. We even have a web assembly interface that allows you to directly call from a web browser. And you can you can directly get those uh, free API bindings by making use of the unified runtime. You can also get things like automatic RPC support that allows you to upload your programs onto a remote devices and, and do remote benchmarking so that you can say, you know, automatically generate an optimized program on your Android devices with, without worrying about, you know, how to, um, how to directly access. The second thing that we are actively going on is we want to build unified intermediate representation that allows us to unify both the high level and low level optimization together into what we call a common module. And in order to do, uh, by doing that, it allows us to, you know, mix and match different levels of representations in a single IR module, and allows us to do some cross uh, uh, cross representation optimization. Um, finally, we are also looking into what we call first class Python support, which means that you know we want to be able to use Python as a first class citizen to be able to resent the intermediate representation and write as a right as the intermediate representation. So developers will be able to directly write their IR programs in Python and manipulate them using Python API. This allows us to accelerate innovation because ML-based compilation is still a very young view. And we can mix and match programs in both Python and C++ if you want. And you, know, you can also shift to C++ when your Python prototype is product ready so that it gives you a path from research to production. Finally, we also want to be able to rethink the low-level tensor IR to introduce uh, things like automatic scheduling and better tensorization support to support uh, more heterogeneous, um, heterogeneous tensor specialized hardware. Um, another thing that we're actively looking at is be able to, you know, as an open source project, to be able to, to be able to interpolate with other existing machine learning compiler infrastructure. In particular, we are working on bring in, in models from both TensorFlow and PyTorch and be able to also you know, generate code that contains external functions and make use of customized packaging and customized code generation. So besides the, the both unification in terms of runtime and IR, one of the final things we're looking into is trying to bring in full stack automation. In this case, our current play in Auto TV and tries to automate the, the optimized operator generation stage. And we want to be able to you know, enlarge that support to use all the TVM across all the layers, including the high level optimization, as well as the hardware specific optimizations. So, um, so far I've talked, I've told you a bit about, you know, TVM and I would like to spend the last minute to talk about, to talk about community perspective. And as you know, that Apache TVM is Apache project. And this means that, you know, it really enables independent governance that allows multiple uh, organizations to, to, to even competitors to collaborate on a project. And so far, TVM is very active and we developed the project on the Apache way, which means that you know, all, all, every, all, every developing events are in the open. You can follow our mail list and discuss forum on that. Um, and there's an open governance model followed by the Apache Software Foundation guideline. Um, it, it has also been widely adopted by a lot of the industrial partners, including um, you know, academia and industry such as, you know, uh, Amazon, Intel, Facebook, ARM, Qualcomm, uh, to name a few. And, uh, and you know, it have be, have, have already powers uh, some of the industrial applications. Uh, one of the notable examples is that, you know, Alexa's wake word actually is optimized by TVM's optimization. Um, we are also holding an annual data conference. This year is virtual. So uh, if you go to tvmconf.org, you will find more information there. With that, I would like to conclude my talk and I will be more than happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah, any questions? Uh,
yeah, so I forgot to include the link to the TVM conference. So if you are interested, uh, you can, I will post it on the chat and uh, please go and check it out. Uh, there's also links to last two years conference in, including uh, video recordings and you can check out the existing applications of, from different industry partners, uh, different industry organizations that are contributing to the community. Yes, so uh, one of the questions, you know, what is the focus, right? So first of all, TVM itself is, uh, is, nat is natively building C++. So, so we, we really want to enable productization on that perspective. And it's also cross language. In a sense that, you know, right now you can, you can you know, access TVM from languages like, you know, when you deploy TVM, you can deploy it into bindings like, you know, uh, 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 C++, Python, JavaScript, Go, and any other languages. But Python is indeed one of the first class citizen we want to support because we, we see a lot of use cases where people want to directly write machine learning program in Python and directly call compilation and deployment from there. Things that TVM is not developed in a core to be cross language. So for example, there's also a recent movement to bring Rust as a first class citizen because there are some interest in security and deployment community on doing that. Yeah, if you have, have if you have any additional questions, you are more than welcome to post to the to the chat or directly speak out. I believe um, that's also possible. Yes, the the question is about you know is there any use cases where it is being used in production? The answer is definitely yes. So if you go to TVM conference 2019, you can find that uh, you can find talks from uh, different companies like, for example, Alexa's Weak Word is one example that you know is is already TVM already powers the AWS uh, SageMaker Neo services. Uh, it also drives some of the Facebook as cl as click through product pipeline, and uh, you can find quite a few use cases actually nowadays using TVM in production on various use cases uh, in both the cloud setting as well as the embedded setting. And, and we will also love to hear a lot more use cases uh, if you are interested in uh, using TVM in your, in your product. Okay, so uh, let me know if it's a, if there's any. Okay, so the there's the additional question about is there easy hello world or Docker container type demo to get started. Um, TVM. Uh, so if you go to tvm.apache.org, there is uh, documents about how do you get started. Uh, unfortunately, right now uh, there's well there is a Docker container, but on the other hand, because uh, the the dog container is is kind of a convenient banner right? so you can you can try to go and try to get quick started on the tutorials, um, um, because there's a dependency on on LVM, so you kind of need to build from source. But there are also third party binaries that you can go and check out and install it, uh, from from the from 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 a third party. Uh, on the other hand, the community uh, usually re uh, maintains a fully Apache compatible. Uh, a source release that you can go and build for your local use cases. Yeah, welcome.
yeah, so I'm, I think I would just stick around for a few more minutes since uh, uh, officially the session still wouldn't end until uh, 9.40. If you have questions, feel free to type in. And uh, um, yeah. Thank you, Felix. Okay, thank you again for coming to my talk, and uh, I'm going to leave for now, but enjoy the rest of the Thanks, Felix, for hosting. Yeah.